The first six months of Caligula's reign were a period of euphoria. They came at a price. In just 12 months, Caligula ran through 2.7 billion sesterces, enough to pay the army for eight years. But the golden days of fun had taken a greater toll on his health. Before the summer was over, he suffered a physical and mental breakdown. Caligula's condition sent shockwaves through Rome. Desperate for his recovery, one high-ranking Roman offered to fight gladiators if the emperor survived. Caligula did, but he was a changed man. For the rest of his life, Caligula suffered headaches and sleepless nights, pacing his palace till daylight. But it was Rome that suffered most. Caligula demanded a terrifying show of loyalty. The man who had promised he would fight as a gladiator, he obliged to fulfill his vow looking on as he struggled in combat and not letting him off until he had won his fight and pleaded repeatedly for delivery. When he was at death's door, he will have come to realise that he was not indispensable. And when he began to recover, he will have realised that people were taking uh, measures that would uh, cover the situation in case he didn't get better. In other words, he saw people preparing for the after Caligula situation, and this was intolerable to him. Caligula lashed out at close relatives and friends as he regained his strength. Gemellus, Tiberius's grandson, was accused of hoping for the emperor's death. The 18-year-old was shown how to kill himself. Caligula turned on his father-in-law, Silenus. The old man was accused of treason. Even Macro fell foul of the Emperor's anger and mistrust. Caligula had grown resentful of his mentor's advice. He charged Macro with prostituting his wife. Both committed suicide. Enya had been Caligula's mistress. Now Macro had gone, no one would hold Caligula back. At the age of 24, Caligula had been handed the reins of power. He had removed immediate threats to his position and thrown himself into an orgy of pleasure. He spent vast amounts on sports and games. Caligula came to believe that he could use his power to indulge his own pleasures and his own whims and that he could do anything to anybody. He didn't realize that if you want to stay in power, you actually have to control your emotions and your desires. Caligula built his own racing track and poisoned his rival's horses. He joked he would appoint his favorite horse to the Senate, since it was as clever as any senator. This was an intelligent man, and a witty one, very well able to deal with words. Uh, the stories about him are sometimes quite amusing, if they didn't have victims. Caligula also had a passion for gladiators. He ordered more bloodthirsty spectacles. And to the horror of the Senate, he even joined in, killing a gladiator in a mock fight. Once, when he and a Mermillo from the gladiatorial school had been having a fight with wooden swords and the latter deliberately fell to the ground, he ran the man through with a real dagger. One year into his reign, Caligula was showing a mania for self-indulgence. Guests to his dinner parties were presented with food made of gold, while the emperor drank pearls dissolved in vinegar. His sexual appetite has gained lasting notoriety. Caligula demanded sex from prisoners, senators, and members of his family. He habitually indulged in incestuous relations with all his sisters, and at a crowded banquet, he would make them take turns in lying beneath him while his wife lay above. When Drusilla, his favorite sister, died in 38 AD, Caligula declared her a goddess. He placed her statue in the temple of Venus, goddess of love. Caligula was obsessed by women he could not have. We don't know whether he was really particularly highly sexed, but what we do know is that he liked 
summoning women away from their husbands, debauching them and then returning them. This is clearly a, a power thing. After his first wife died in childbirth, Caligula snatched his second wife at her wedding to another man. He divorced her within weeks. His third wife was married too. The emperor forced her husband to give her away. But in his fourth wife, Caesonia, Caligula found his soulmate. She was promiscuous and extravagant. Caligula was delighted, parading her naked in front of his friends. But even she was not safe. When Caligula kissed her neck, he told her he could cut it whenever he wanted. She bore him his only child, Drusilla, named after his sister. Less than two years after his ecstatic reception, the emperor's behavior was causing alarm in the Senate. By early AD 39, there were stirrings of resistance. Caligula's response was to unleash terror. Marching into the Senate, he branded them hypocrites who turned against Tiberius and would turn against him. Now he revealed he'd kept copies of lists of his family's enemies, despite his promise. There was panic as he accused everyone of involvement in his family's deaths. Caligula's attitude towards the Senate was one of complete contempt. Now the gloves are completely off. The facade of a Roman emperor who takes advice and listens to his Senate is well and truly over. <laughs> 